Hello and thank you for stopping by my channel. I hope you're doing extra good today. We're going to be talking about Amy Coney Barrett. She is the new justice that was uh, sworn in and we're going to do a little bit of numerology on her to try and some tarot cards. We're going to try to see who is this woman that's going to play a very important role in the history of our you know, justice system. So her first name comes out to be a three. Her middle name is Vivian, and that comes out to be a five. Her maiden name comes out to be an eight, and the, her married name comes out to be a three. Um, now, she was born on January 28th of 1972, making her a three life path. Now, a three life path is someone who would work in groups, all right? So she would um, do best working in a group setting. And this is one of the things that she's doing in being in the court system is she would be working with uh, groups. So this is a good thing for her life path. This is also about communication, all right? Now, one of the things interesting is that Amy is a one. That's the number one. She was born in January. That's the number one. Two plus eight, anything above nine, you add it together. Two plus eight is a 10, which is a one. She's got one, one, one. She is going to be extremely independent, okay? Extremely independent. We're going to write that on here. Independent. No one is going to tell this woman what to do. She's got her mind made up and that's the way it will be. All right. Now, I wanted to put in here that she happens to be married. Her spouse, his name is Jesse. I don't know his middle name, but... His last name is Barrett, all right? And I was going to find out um, his date of birth to see if it's public, see if I can find it. He also has an attorney background, attorney assistant. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm still looking for the date of birth here. Uh, they're just giving the year 1969. I wonder why that is. Uh, 1969. Huh. That's very interesting. So, I can't locate it, so we're just going to skip it and focus on her. All right. So, she is in, in 2020, she is in a sixth year. This is about being of service to others, all right? And in November, this is an eight month for her, so it's all about power. But December is going to be a difficult month for her because it's about endings. Um, now, this doesn't mean that her career will end, but this is a challenging month to get through. But coming back into 2021, she'll be in a seven year, and then another power year. She gets back into another power year in 2021. So that's going to be interesting, the cycles that she's going to go in for numerology. Now, one quick note. Um, her spouse is a 15115. Look at all the ones. And then Barrett has a one in it um, and two nines and two twos. So the spouse has two S's, two E's, two R's, and two T's. This makes him, in numerology, a strong twin. Not that he has another sibling born at the same time, but he's got a lot of twin numbers. And it would be interesting if I could find his date of birth to see if he was born like on the 11th or the 22nd or something like that, if he has twin numbers in his um, date of birth also. Um, I highly suspect there's twins somewhere in there. So she was sworn in on the 26th which is an eight on a month that is a 10, which is a one, all right? One is her power number. So that makes her independent. Um, it could make her, if she became unbalanced, self-centered, right? It could make her self-centered. 
Now, she's got this eight here on the day she was born, and so she's all about power. She wants to feel powerful, all right? But with a three life path, um, that kind of would make her life path be where she should be like joyful, happy, you know, which might be why she has um, a few children in that because her life path wants her to be in communication, joyful, working in groups, um, and happiness, all right? So in 2020, a sixth year is being of service to others, right? It's being of service to others. So the Justice Department totally would be that, all right? Now, interesting of the 2021, a seven year, this can be success, but this would be a year for her to go inside and find out who she really is. Um, very spiritual or religious year. And uh, so this is going to be very interesting to see what her what her situation is. When I look for patterns, I see number one, she's got leadership qualities here. She's got communication. Her, her middle name, I'm not so concerned about, but the two fours would be justice. That would be contracts and things like that. Um, her Coney was an eight and she traded power in for communication when she, when she added the name Barrett to her last name, her married name. So she added communication and kind of subdued a little bit of power. Um, so she grew up obviously in a powerful house with, you know, um, her parents and everything. And so now we're going to ask the tarot cards. What do we have to know about Amy Coney Barrett being in the justice? I, and I like to leave it open like that. What do we have to know about her being in the S Supreme Court? What do we have to know? Uh, so she's got a lot to learn. Folks, if you think that, oh, she's got all this legal experience, uh, things are different in the court. And this is the card about learning. She's got to learn the process. So she's like the new person on the block, right? So she's not just going to come in here and be experienced. Um, this is the chariot, the willpower. Now, this is, this is having opposing viewpoints. She might find herself in a court that's got extreme black and white opposing viewpoints. Here she is in the middle trying to decide trying to decide what she will do with these extreme opposing views. Oh, why is that coming in? Well, that kind of throws a winger in things. December is a nine. I wonder, huh, that's like, the end of her career or maybe things are so difficult when she gets in there that she resigns which would be weird for a one to do that ones are not known to do that huh okay I don't know what that's about so whenever I'm a little confused by this I have to ask what we call a clarifying card I rarely have to do that when you watch my YouTubes, rarely do I pull a confirmation card. Usually the story is clear. I can't tell what's going on here. So, what is, I'm clarifying the death. It's right in here, right in here. What the heck? It's being difficult today. Something new. Ending? and a new beginning, and this is a one, and she's a powerful one. Huh. Well, isn't that something? Ending something and beginning something new, and there's an offer to do something different. Do you suppose that somebody will offer her something different and she will just take that instead? I don't know how you get out of being appointed um, in the Supreme Court. How do you get out of that? She's going to be starting something new. And January is a one month for everybody. And January is technically a power month for her be being on the 28th. Well, that's her birth month. Oh, something important is going to happen in January. That's her power month. That's her birthday month. Oh, dear. That's the card about being kicked out. 
Do you suppose she's going to do something that's going to cause her immediately to be pulled out? Because Five of Pentacles is not a good card. This was all looking fine until the death showed up and the Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles, those people feel like they've been thrown out. This could be a church or whatever. They've been abandoned. They've been kicked out. Ugh. This is not looking good for her. This is not looking good for her. Yeah. She might fight it. She might try to fight it. But there again, now she's involved in a battle. I mean, who wants to start out something and then end up in a battle? But she is. <laughs> she's going to end up in a huge battle. Oh, my. Look at all that battle energy. And But even though this card, she thinks she's successful, the death overrides it. The, the, the death in the background, she's like, oh, I got this. I'm going to win. Poof. Nope. That major card has precedence over that. So she's going to put up a good battle. That's for sure. And she, it might look like she's on top. Oh, she's not wanting to deal with this. Hmm. Well, I didn't expect the reading to go like this, but that's where the cards go. And as you know, on political readings, I don't um, take any side. I remain neutral. I believe the best readings um, are when you're neutral and when you simply read what the cards tell you. Um, that way you don't have a filter or a lens on. So I'm going to tell you right now that um, it's, it's, it's not going to look good for her. And with her numbers, um, she wants to be powerful. She wants to be in power. She wants things to be peaceful and everybody to cooperate. She's all about power. Uh, one and eight, all about power, individuality. Um, they don't, this would be really difficult if in December is when, if the, if the death card is going to influence it, when I look at the numbers, it looks like it would be December. December's the month to watch. That's the month to watch. Now, in January, where she becomes powerful again, or could, because that's her birth month, we can ask, I'm going to pull a different deck out, what's going to be um, the outcome? Because sometimes if you're not balanced in your number, then instead of being powerful, you're powerless. So let's pull one card and say, what's going to be, um, what do we have to know about Amy Coney Barrett in January of 2021? What do we have to know about her? This is Robin Wood tarot for anybody that's watching. The world. Well, that's, this is like her fate, her destiny, her fate. Um, and this is like security, wanting security. The knight uh, focused on, well, I don't, I guess I don't have to turn it around. The knight focused on security. She's wanting security. Um, all right. Now these, January, these are good cards. None of these are bad cards. Is she going to be still in the justice? Is she going to still be a justice in January? There's a choice. Oh, this is a choice to be made because it's like night and day. So what choice is she going to make? Oh, wow. Um, so there's going to be a major change with the wheel. Well, we're going to have to watch and see the, I don't read reversed. So I look at all the cards upright. So there is going to be some kind of change and there's a choice and a big change. And this is the card about the home. This isn't the work card. None of these are the work card which is throwing me off a little bit because where where is she? <laughs> is she if she's not working? But she's feeling powerful. She's feeling good, the Queen of Wands, but she's made a big choice and made a big change. That's interesting. World can represent freedom too. Um, is Amy, here's the Hanson Robin, Roberts deck. Is Amy Coney Barrett going to enjoy being a justice? Is she going to enjoy it? Here comes the chariot again. That, that's about willpower. She'll enjoy it if she feels powerful. If she feels powerful, she will enjoy it. 
And there you've got the emperor. But she's got to remain in control. The emperor wants to be in control. She has to feel like she's in control. Like she has a certain amount of control. And you've got the strength card there again. All about, remember the eight? And she, her power is eight. So as long as she's in control, feels powerful in that, she will enjoy it. It's all about how, you know, how she's accepted into the court and, and you know, what happens from that day on. So that death card is interesting, but we'll see what happens because uh, we don't know. <laughs> so let's not leave any negative comments on this. This is just someone, this is just a woman who is going into a position. We don't have to put a whole lot of energy into this except... You know, it is, you know, she was sworn in on an eight day. A lot of times you'll see coincidences like that where she was born on the 28th. So it's no surprise that she was, that she was sworn in on a eight day. And then she's a one, here's an October, but still a one and born in a one and has a one for her, her first name. So this is like leadership, power decisions. So it, so if she stays balanced in her numbers, that will work out fine. But if she does not, uh, ones can be very manipulative so that it will be interesting to and we have to you know we have to just sit back and see where is she you'll be able to quickly tell if she's not balanced in her numbers but regardless the cards showed some kind of big struggle and big challenge so we'll see in the next few months uh, what happens with that but that's the our reading on Amy uh, Coney Barrett and thank you for joining me if you have any questions post them below and I'd be happy to help you